All right, we are back. We just scrolled accidentally, but we uh, finished that siege so we can kind of keep moving on here. We're getting the war score. I kind of want to take something else from these guys after all this trouble they've given me, but I don't think there's going to be anything I can really take from them. Maybe I can get them to separate piece out at some point. How much war score do I have against them? 3%? Get them to do a separate piece, then I'll have a hundred percent war score against uh, the Golden Horde. That might be the way to go. Let's fast forward here a little bit because this is going to be a lot of waiting. A lot of waiting indeed. Okay, so they did cross over. That's good. That's kind of what I was hoping would happen. They didn't get wiped out, but we'll go back and siege back stuff. We probably have a decent amount of time, I would imagine. With the Golden Horde. 57 months. That'll be fun. The mercenaries are going to get... They're going to earn their pay while they're still in my employ, I guess. It's kind of good they're weakening Crimea out a little bit too, I guess. I wish I had... Uh, a settlement out here I don't have the point if I if I could get a settlement built I could probably uh, take some territory off Uzbek too but it's not gonna be happening anytime soon I kind of wish I didn't have to fight them because I don't really want to weaken them but they brought this upon themselves there's not much I can really do about it I don't really want to play at a high speed right now because their armies are out there somewhere causing ready to cause mischief and I don't know is is this in the range of a fort I think their only fort might be that one but it's hard to know their army is almost definitely down that way so let's head out this way and just try to seize more stuff from them all right, we should have plenty of war score to get some sort of peace now. So, what... We have 9%. Not quite. If I could get some money off of Uzbek, I'd be happy, because we have spent a lot of money on this war. We were at, like, seven or 800 ducats, and now we're at 132. So, I've spent, like, quite a lot of money for one province at this point. And it kind of irritates me. There's no way I'm going to get that idea unlocked for a colonist soon enough, I don't think, either. Maybe we'll just go for 100%, but they still have... How many soldiers? They still have a lot of soldiers out here. Somewhere. So let's detach just a couple guys. I want to have these guys as reinforcements, because there's probably an army out here somewhere. Oh, there's one army. And there's another. And so I'm not going to be able to reverse to deal with that. But you might be able to get there. Well, let's see what the Golden Horde will do now. Yeah, they're still unhappy, so... I think a separate piece with Uzbek is going to be necessary. Currently have negative seven reasons. So we're, we're in almost there. We want another fight or two and might have this in under control. I don't think we're going to get what I want from them because, like I said, there's no way we're going to get the Diplo points I need and get a settler out here in time. Yeah, you just wipe that guy out. That's fine. Actually, let's just see if we can get everybody to swing down here and deal with you. I have no hostile armies over there. I'm a little, a little bit concerned. I don't see their en the enemy force. There they are. 
If we can seize all their land, they probably cannot... Do I have my forts on up here? Let's just... I should probably just fort up everything at this point. It's so time consuming. At least we have a lot of this mapped out, so it'll be a little bit easier the next time around. I really don't need those rebels. Where are they gonna spawn? I don't even know where that is. Brezic. I haven't even been paying enough attention to the disasters and stuff. I don't want to deal with that. They gain 10 loyalty, powerful noble, local tax modifier, 20%. That's fine. I don't need more rebels right now. Not a good time. If they were down here somewhere, I'd be like, yeah, sure, let the uh, let the the no guy fight them or whoever that is. Someone, yeah, that's the hired army. Damn it! I wish they hadn't hired that army. I'd, it's gonna complicate war so much having to deal with that. Are you guys even marching? Yeah, you are. That could be beneficial or not. So many rebels. That's what I get for expanding quickly, but... No, everybody march down there, because... We just need to finish this fight. Are you ready to quit yet? Negative five reasons still. They're gonna make some gains up there probably too. I mean, they did just defeat that. They barely defeated that army though. That wasn't very impressive. <sighs> All right, they are ready to just leave for white peace, but they will give me some money. I can't take any land from them. You know, because I can't court. If I'd had a border with them, I could have probably gotten a province or two out of this. But that's just fine. Because that means we are down to a single front in this war. I'd rather not go through native territory. And that also means we have no armies to deal with. Just the rebels at this point, right? Yep. So, are you guys willing to be vassalized now and give me all your money? You don't have very much money. And I might as well just revoke cores because I think that will stop some of the uh, problems we're having. There's all the cores that I can revoke are down there, though. It doesn't really cost me anything. It does get me more uh, overextension, though, doesn't it? No, not overextension. Okay, it just gets me prestige. I suppose I might as well revoke cores. Golden Horde, yeah, that's fine, and fine. Whew. All right, so now we just have a billion rebels to deal with. But it's progress, what can I say? And again, I don't want you going through the damn rebel territory. I mean, the, the native territory. Yes, I will accept your alliance. It's actually fine with me if Golden Horde Separatists reform the Golden Horde down here on uh, unfriendly territory. Well, not this is allied territory, but it's actually fine with me. I don't really care what happens down there. 
Lose a province or two. Royal marriage, sure. <sighs> Be good to get rid of these damn mercenaries when we can. They're costing us so much money. Wh who wants demand? Okay, what do you want? You're at 9%. Which one was it? The clergy again. Well, how about you guys? I can't give it to them until it's cord, can I? Does that calm them down? Sure does. All right, cool beans. So now if we can just get past this rebel issue will be in pretty good shape just have a, a little bit of peace that would be nice wait for my armies to get the hell out of where they are hopefully yeah it looks like my vassal's gonna go siege back that golden horde stuff so that will be helpful and i do have two two dudes who are not doing anything right now so who's fighting now oh, they're gonna try again it's kind of cute um and yeah, they're already building I could probably fabricate a claim down here, couldn't I? Sure can. So we'll fabricate a claim on Mansur. Like I said, we just kind of want to gobble them up and get them away from Lithuania. That's why I'm being kind of aggressive here, going hard to hard in the paint right away here, because uh, I want to make sure that we don't have to deal with Lithuania blobbing at all, and then we can just focus on them. Crimea looks like they might actually kill those guys, which is cool. That's one less rebel army to worry about. And we should have, hopefully, the strength to do this real quick. Oh, you guys aren't going to come help? You bastards. Oh, we have a mission we can go for. Let's see. Rival of a rival. Poland opinion at 100%. That's another fairly straightforward one, I think. Poland shouldn't hate us too bad right now. What's going on in Poland? Oh, man. Poland is making its move for the the uh, Teutonic Order, but Hungary joined the war. That's kind of good. Maybe Poland's not going to be going anywhere this time, too. I would like to really, like, all this Muslim territory is nice to get in a way, but it causes a lot of rebel problems. And uh, at this point, I can't convert it for a really long time. Did Crimea win? They did not win still. But it's putting them through the meat grinder down there too, so at least their manpower is going to be pretty well depleted. I'm all for that. Looks like we're going to lift the siege. Good. Life is good. We have peace, finally. Lots of rebuilding to do. Are they going to win? No, oh, they're not going to win. I'm not that worried about the Golden Horde Separatists at this point. Their army is pretty well depleted. And at some point soon... Yeah, we'll definitely take the military tech. At some point soon, they're going to just... Uh, get ground down, and then my vassals are working on uh, sieging back my stuff. They, maybe Crimea will lose a province, which would not be the worst thing in the world. Well, that ended up working out okay. It was very expensive, very terrible. Our war exhaustion is definitely high, I know. My my war exhaustion is kind of high at this point. Why do I still have black flag troops? Okay, so those are just all mercs, costing us lots of money. But we are not in war, so let's reduce our maintenance down to about halfway. We can shut off the forts everything's kind of under control and that gets us to almost positive money and then it's just a matter of kind of waiting out the cores waiting out some of this nasty war exhaustion 
and rebuilding the army. Oh, they're trying to, they're going to get it this time. Yeah, the Golden Horde guys are not so bad because there are two other countries that have cores with the Golden Horde down there. Three other countries that have Golden Horde, Horde, uh, I just said Golden Horde. Uh, they have Golden Horde uh, cores, so they will definitely be useful in curtailing those shenanigans down there. Now let's start improving with you because I'd kind of like to vassalize you soon here. Or uh, annex you rather. And we get the last core started. Okay, what do we got here? Post-war tax relief. No. You know, the manpower modifier is probably the least painful because we're not going to be going to war. I mean, I would like for our manpower to build up more quickly than that, but what are you going to do? It is what it is. We can start our colonization, which I would like to do. What is this? You can choose a native policy. This is this is different. All right. What do I do? You need to choose a native policy. Is this native policy? Native coexist policy. We are live and let live. Native uprising chance minus 100%. That would be good. Global settler increase is good too, though. But we don't have the army to really deal with putting down natives all the time right now. I'd rather keep the army over here while we're getting our start out in Siberia. And we don't really have the money to support it. I think it's going to be like two ducats a month to support that colony. So we need to kind of wait till we can get rid of the mercs, I think, before hiring the uh getting the colony started out there but it's good we're gonna have really early start on the expansion to the east hopefully we can get out to the east coast and get over to the west coast of north america before too long all right so this will get them up to everybody will still be loyal enough Hmm. Favor neither. Who would I rather have be pissed off here? We side with the clergy, we get 15 loyalty with the clergy, which brings them up to like 68 or something. We lose with boyers. We'll side with the clergy. What is this? We have 83 months is a little long. I'm not going to start doing that yet. But we're getting into the realm of being able to convert some of this stuff, which is good. So definitely going to be favoring the clergy for a little bit so we can get that done. Because sooner we can start getting the stuff converted and get our stability... In these provinces, the revolt risk down to a more reasonable level, the better. Although we don't really have very much revolt risk at the moment. I am going to just increase autonomy to get rid of that utterly right now. And I don't think there's anything I can do about this until it gets cored. So Everybody's pretty happy for the moment because everybody rebelled. So they're at like negative 1,000 or whatever for, uh, for revolt risk for a while. And it's just a matter of waiting for these cores to get done. My manpower pool is very slowly starting to recuperate, so we can start switching out to mercenary. Yeah, we want the money right now. Prestige is nice and all, but money is what keeps the lights on around here. We're almost breaking even. Because everybody is settling the hell down. That was a pretty like uh, crazy period of war with a lot of aggressive, aggressive expansion. Going on. Like, how much aggressive expansion did I end up getting with Lithuania. Actually, it's not too bad. 37 right now, that's that's not that bad. I was worried I was going to get a coalition made against me, but apparently we didn't get that crazy. So everything seems like it's going to settle down. We just go through a boring period of doing nothing. And let's just, I know that that's a thing, but let's just ignore it for now. So we do have the possibility of some favor from these guys, don't we? We could lose 20 loyalty... 
Do I need the administrative power? I mean, I always need administrative power. Hmm. Inquisitor would be pretty handy. I think they're the ones that help with... I can't really afford it right now. Let's just uh, catch in for some admin points, because Lord knows I spent enough on coring stuff recently. So let's go at four speed here. I don't really like to go at five speed, especially with Fraps kind of making things run weird. Let's take a moment to actually just survey what's going on around us now. So our border... We, we can't go to war with them again until 82, which is uh, good, because I don't want to. I think, are they still allied with Uzbek? Yeah, they're still allied with everybody. So basically, if I go to war here, I have to go to war with all three of these jerks. So that might be something that gets put off for a little bit. We can probably get uh, Krsika, Kirkassia on board if we offer them some territory or something but i don't really know that i want to do that because they're still small enough that they would accept vassalization they're actually close to wanting to so that might be something that we could do in the future as well yeah so i think we'll just let them stay as an ally as they are for now uh, how are things with you at this point they, they are always just jerks about becoming vassals. Yeah, so I think we'll probably integrate uh, Poskov here. That will get us down to just a penalty of one. Then we can fabricate the rest of our claims here, push in there, wipe out uh, Livonian order. Looks like Poland is unfortunately going to win that war. Who are they fighting against? Hungary. Hungary is the only one that really had a chance of giving them too much trouble, but it looks like the Teutonic Order is indeed going to be taking a hit, which is too bad, because I would really like to get Danzig and stuff from them, but it just kind of doesn't look like it might be in the cards. We'll have to, we'll keep an eye on how that war with Poland goes. I would have rather Poland lost that, because the smaller Poland is better. They're always difficult. And Lithuania is at war. No, that's why Lithuania ended up joining that war. I didn't realize that. So who are Lithuania's other allies? They're allied with... Hmm... They don't really have any useful allies to declare on, because I can't get a claim on Raja from where I am. That would be kind of nice. Oh, but they're allied with... Pol no, they're allied with... I guess I could declare... No, because they'll call in... Yeah, that, that's not going to work. I'll have to uh, come up with a clever way of attacking Lithuania without getting Boland involved. But uh, I think I'm going to end it here for today. When we come back, we'll go ahead and uh, deal with the fallout from this war still. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.